So now we move on to phonons. And phonon basically is term we use for for lattice, vibra vi lattice vibration, but phonon, known or photon, phonon, all these somethings that ends with nones implies that th this has something to do with quantum mechanics. And there's a smallest sort of like a unit of lattice vibration energy that can take, uh, that can be taken in a, in a solid. So at the end, in a very small energy scale, everything's quantized, dispersed. That's why we call it phonons, okay? But we will start from very simple description, which is, let's just assume that we have crystal, bra well, bravilatus, some kind of bravilatus. And up to now, we always assume that they are perfectly periodic and not moving, they're not moving at all. But what we want to know, what we want to do is we want, in, in real cases, they are oscillating, vibrating. So we want to understand the, you know, relation between wavelengths and, and energy and so on. So very often, we use one lattice plane. Here's the S lattice plane. S minus one, S plus one, S plus two lattice plane. And longitudinal mode. I will start from longitudinal mode. Longitudinal mode. is where you have phono, this, is at, this atom is not moving, but this atom is displaced by so much, and this atom is displaced by so much, uh, this is like too exaggerated. But here's the displacement. Here's the displacement. And then uh, this atom is displaced here. So, um, idea is that, um, no, the other way around, sorry, the other way around. This has to be displaced the other way around. So, idea is that the move movement is along this side. And you have no displacement, little displacement, larger displacement, and maybe even larger displacement, but then displacement gets smaller and smaller and smaller to come back to this point, and so on, okay? So that's a, that's a longitudinal mode. There's also transverse mode. Transverse mode. transverse mode. And that is, we have such lattice and transverse mode you have displacement here here, 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 and so on. So, you know, basically, you have this kind of a wave, right? Displacement here, 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 here. So, you know, transverse mode, okay? And here, this is, Again, describe as us minus two, uh, u 
s minus 1, u, u, s plus 1, and so on. So basically, you just have to sort of see how uh, the displacement is as a, as, a, as a function of, for example, the lattice plane, lattice plane. So that's how we are going to treat the problem. And basically, let me, if I may, So we use, we treat equation of motion using Hooke's law. Hooke's law, okay? Uh, Hooke's law meaning that brief storation So res restoring force, restore, restoring force is proportional to to displacement. Larger the displacement larger the restoring force, larger the force to go back, okay? So this is like a, so this is really, you know, one of those spring and ball model, right? You have a spring constant K. Do you use K for spring constant? Okay. You pull, larger you pull, larger the spring constant, the restoring force is. So in, you know, basically, for, for for from now on, we just think about those with you know basically some string constant, right? And string constant in this case in this way, because it's a it's a wave in this side, this direction. Here we have string constant like this, right? It goes come back. So there there is a spring, but they will come back. With depending on how much displaced, how displaced they are, okay? So in this case, the force to come back is given by, for something like summation minus, because it's a gravity lattice, it's an it's a infinitely large, size, large crystal, CP, displacement, now this is a displacement. Displacement at S plus P minus S is given by M mass and US displacement uh, with um, double uh, double derivative. And here CP, CP is as restoring um, restoring force constant. Which is, you know, basically the spring constant. Okay? So this one, in this model, you see S plus P minus S means that we are considering not only neighboring uh, connection, but this is connected to everything. Because, you know, I'm sum summarize, sum uh, adding, not all, uh, interaction of con spring constant, not only between here and here, but here between here and here and between there and there and everything. Okay, but that's not so realistic. So um, in the future, at least in the treatment, what we're going to provide is considers only the nearest neighbor uh, connection, only the you know spring constant with just the nearest neighbor, your neighbors. That's all we are going to do. Okay. 
Okay. So if that's the case, then uh, but let me just move on with this equation first. Okay. So th this is a this is a this is a this is a this is basically the uh, uh, we are talking about restoring force constant between atom S and P. And it has a solution of the form of the form solution of the form US US is E I omega T. You can sort of guess because it's a wave equation. Second derivative is still similar to the non derivative uh, original. That means something like you know ex exponent must be must be involved. Okay. Then we have minus m omega square mu s. That's the right hand side. Right. Double derivative become C p mu not mu, u, u, s plus p minus u s. Okay, and u s plus p must have something like u exponential i. S plus P K A. What 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 is this? This is this is a traveling traveling wave. This is now traveling wave. And with the with the wave vector K. Then we move on. So, hence, And just looking at this, I should be able to. Sorry, this is this is CP CP U U. Um, does it make sense? M. This is M. Sorry. M omega square U S is this one, and then uh, U S is this one. I S omega T C P U S P U S P is uh, this one. Mu.
something, something doesn't work, does it? You. This is okay. The left hand side is okay. Because instead of S plus P, we have S only. So that's, that's here. And CP, that's okay. And then we have U, E, S plus P, S plus P, this is S plus P, S plus P minus US, minus US. Ah, that, that's minus. Are you happy with this? Oh, now I no, I'm not happy. Uh, oh, this is I am not happy because this should be minus one, right? Okay, this should be minus one. Then I'm happy. Okay. Okay. Now, CP is C minus P. What is CP? I mean, you know, after all, CP is just a let, uh, spring constant. So spring constant has to be symmetric, right? Right? So then, then we get minus M omega square equals to p larger than zero. I just wanted to get p larger than zero only. I just wanted to choose p larger than zero. Okay? Right now we have from minus to plus positive, minus infinity to positive infinity. But I want to put everything into the positive side. And cp i p K A plus E minus I minus I P K P K A okay minus two. That's what you get. And here this is cosine P K A. So at the end what you get is omega square. 2 over m p larger than 0 cp 1 minus cosine p k a that's it so we have here we have dispersion related this dispersion Relation that relates relates omega and and k. This is you know this is very similar to this is very similar to um, this is very similar to the band diagram. Remember we uh, we always had e versus k. Now we have omega versus k. Okay. So I have at k equals zero. Omega equals zero, right? At k equals zero, omega equals zero. Because we have, we have one minus cosine pKa, okay? And at this point, let's find group velocity. Group velocity. 
group velocity it means the you know how fast the phonon or lattice vibration propagating. Okay, that's given by d dk omega square. Just like just like a band diagram, you take a you take a slope, and that's a group velocity. Band diagram slope was a group velocity of electron. In this dispersion, we have. Um, Group velocity given by this, and that's sorry that that we take this and that become two omega d omega d k, and here this is a this is a group velocity. Sorry, this is a group velocity. Group velocity, and that's given by. When K A So when K A equals plus minus pi when k is zero, group velocity, uh, group velocity was given by this quantity, and then uh, basically what I'm what I'm saying is that uh, this becomes zero when k a is plus minus pi. Okay. Okay. And we will we will see we will see this visually very soon. Now, as I said, assume nearest nearest neighbor interaction only. Now we assume nearest neighbor interaction only. Then what happened is that CP is zero for P larger than two. When P, so how many atoms away? If it's right next to it, CP equals one. If so many, two atoms away, CP equals two. So, you know, basically we just, Consider this as well, for CP1 only. That if we consider CP1 only, then omega from this, omega square becomes 2C1 divided by M1 minus cosine Ka. P is 1. P is one. Okay. okay. And this is this this part of the equation is actually known as two sine square k. A divided by two. If you look up the math table, that's what you get. So you get four C one M sine square K A divided by two and omega is therefore given by 4C1M 
one half sine ka divided by two that's it, that's what you get So if I draw this graphically, what I get is the following. Here's zero. And this is pi over a. This is minus pi over a. Here's 2 pi over a and minus 2 pi over a. And you get something like this for the dispersion curve. Omega. So now we get something very similar to what we got for energy diagram, band diagram. As I said, the group velocity is zero at pi over a. So pi over a, the slope is zero. And here's some slope, right? And they just repeat. So then, and what is this called? Brillian zone. Exactly the same. Pi, from minus pi over a to positive pi over a. So, uh, just like the electronic properties, we also get for lattice vibration, Brillian zone that is exactly the same as, down, as the one in the energy band diagram. And then this thing just repeats forever. So you only need to think about dispersion within minus pi over a and plus pi over a. Okay? Okay. Then this is a also you can sort of see what is the what is the what is the largest k you get? It repeats forever, but we have to ask ourselves, what is the largest largest s we get for, for phonons? K. Is there a limit? Does it repeat forever or they or it doesn't? So let's consider simple, simple one-dimensional crystal. Okay, here's one-dimensional crystal. Remember, lambda is two pi over k, right? So largest k is given by smallest lambda. What is the smallest lambda? This is A. The smallest lambda you can get for transfer, transverse mode, for example. The smallest one is something like this. 
like this one. Right? You, can, you cannot get anything smaller than this because you cannot define any shorter wavelengths. Okay? So, here, wavelength is 2a. Wavelength is approximately 2a, right? And if I put 2a here, k is what? 2a equals 2 pi over k. So k is uh, pi over a. Right? Hmm? Okay? And that's the maximum k. So even though I drew like this, physically, the maximum k you can get is here. And here. Right? And you cannot have this part, so we have to erase it. Because this part is physically impossible. You just don't have, you cannot have any shorter wavelength than this. Is it clear? So this is a, this is a, this is something different from electron. Electron wave can be as short as you want. Electron wave. But phonon wave, you cannot make it shorter than, wavelength shorter than this because of the periodicity. So we so so phonons. This is the this is the shortest wavelength of the phonons that you can get in in a crystal. So this is um, you know this is a uh, this is of course far away from so-called continuum limit. Uh, it's different from strings. For example, if this is just a, uh, oscillating strings, you can take as small wavelengths as you want, but because the phonon is due to the lattice vibration, um, there, is a, there is a shortest wavelength uh, that can take. And that puts the, uh, you know, boundary to the, to the boundary that, uh, you know, this is uh, limited to 2a equals to lambda, and that's 2 pi k. So k, is in this case is pi over a, and there's no um, k that is um, basically larger than this. Okay, so k is always equal to or smaller than plus minus. Uh, this is probably the proper way of saying. Okay, but let me. Um, Think about so-called continuum. Limit. Which is, for the case, Ka much smaller than one. Okay, for much smaller than one. So, A is much smaller than lambda. Right, I mean, sorry, the H, A is much smaller than lambda. So in other words, you have this big wave, you have this big wave with many atoms. Right? Lambda is large compared to A. A is this one, lambda is this one. And in, in, this, in this case, um, remember that we had equation uh, which says It says 
omega equals to 4 C over M. C is a lat basically the spring constant um, and uh, 1 over 2 and sine Ka over 2. And in this limit, uh, when when a um, when when k a is much smaller than one, then sine. Ka over 2 is approximately equals to 1 half Ka. Then omega becomes 4C1 uh, M sine Ka uh, no 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 sorry becomes equals to C1 M 1 half Ka. So what this means is that in a dispersion curve, omega, the frequency is linear with K. So when you when you draw, when I draw this, when I, when I draw this, last time, I actually intentionally made this part straight. Because this part is, this part is straight. And then they curve. And then it reaches pi over two. And it reaches minus pi over two. Okay? So that's a continuum limit. And this is, you know, and this is basically the same as the motion of the string. So this is a continuum limit. Okay? So now, um, we move on to the next problem. where we have where we have two atoms. Now we have two different atoms. Basically it's the two atoms in a base. Okay? So we have one big atom, small atom, one big atom, small atom, one big atom, or it just, you know, it doesn't have to be big and small, it's just the two different atoms, okay? Uh, big atom has M1 mass, small one has M2. That's mass. Okay? And then, um, let's just see. This position I call U sub S, position. Now we have to talk about displacement. And this position is Vs, U and V. And this is Us plus one. And this is Vs minus one, Us minus one. 
and this is of course V S plus one. It's a position. Okay? And then they are connected with same spring constant. Okay. Spring constant. C, same spring constant. Spring constant. Okay, um, then um, let's just assume that let's just treat first the longitudinal mode. Longitudinal mode, it's the same story for the transverse mode. But remember, longitudinal mode is vibration in this direction. Okay? So this is what we're going to treat. Okay? So the equation of motion, for example, M1, US, uh, you know, double derivative. Do you call it? Oh, this is ohm run. Right? Yeah. So then that's a spring constant minus V, Vs minus US. Of course, we're talking about here, right? Position, my displacement, minus C, US, minus VS minus one, All right? Now, so basically, we just want to treat this particular uh, atom and then see displacement with respect to Vs1, Vs minus one, and Vs. Okay, and this is C, Vs plus Vs minus one minus two Us. Now, we do the same for I don't know what what you call this. I don't. There isn't one like this in German. <laughs> okay. Pressing V, long time. Then we may find something. <laughs> but similarly, we get. U.S. plus one plus uh, U.S. plus one plus U.S. Uh, minus two V.S. Right? So we want to solve these equations, and we assume the solution of the form. Assume solution of the form. Set, set US equals to U E I S K A E exponential minus I omega T. Okay? So S is a position, so this is like a this is like a you know, uh, XKA, which is just, uh, you know, SA is like a X, okay? So this is just a, you know, traveling wave. And also we set VS equals to V, some initial V, exponential I, S, K, A, and E minus omega I minus omega T, okay? So now, we insert this into here, and these into this, basically, and we'll see how you get, what you get. So you, you basically substitute. 
And you, get, you just get one of those, you know, you just do substitution. You just do substitution and you get one of those m1 omega square u e i s k a exponential minus i omega t equals to c e minus i omega t uh, v exponential i s k a plus v exponential i s i k s a minus i k a minus 2 u e i k and so on, right? I mean, just This is just you know, substituting this into the first equation. Uh, you take the double derivative of this. Double derivative of this is this part. And right hand side is just right hand side is just this part. Okay? And then minus this is now minus one omega square. You can erase this, this. Uh, this, uh, this, and this part, and this part, and you get something like C B one plus E I K A minus two C U. Okay. And similarly, 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 I call this x, I call it x1, equation one. Um, you know, we get m2 omega square v equals to c u e i k a plus 1 minus 2cv, call it x2. Then uh, we get 2c minus m1 omega square, u minus c, 1 plus exponential minus i k a, v equals to 0. This is just from here to here. I'm just, you know, putting everything on the left hand side to make it zero. So that's same as x1. And uh, minus c a, a plus one u plus two c minus And that's x2. By the way, this is like this is like NaCl. You know, when you have something like NaCl, you have two atoms, right? Two alternating atoms. So it's not so artificial. It's actually very realistic. The problem that we're working on is very realistic. So now. In order to find u and v, uh, we just have to get, uh, sorry, we j in order to find uh, these frequencies, uh, we have to get, we have to take the determinant, right? This times this minus this times this equals to zero, okay? That's, we take a determinant. So, hence, so we take determinant, so 4c squared plus m1, m2, omega 4 minus 2c omega squared, m1 plus m2 minus c squared, 2 plus e, i, k, a, 
plus E minus I K A equals to zero. M1, M2, omega 4 minus 2C, M1 plus M2, omega square plus 2C square, 1 minus cosine Ka equals to 0. And this is, this part can be substituted with 2 sine square Ka over 2. So now we have the uh, relation between K and omega, although there are so many other parameters, m and so on. But you know, basically, you know m1 and m2. You know c. So really, what we want to know is the relation between omega and k. Um, the relation between omega and k is, is, the, is, the, uh, is the dispersion curve, right? Omega versus k. So we solve this for a limiting case. So let's try to solve this for a limiting, limiting case. Okay? Limiting case. So limiting case one. Ka much smaller than one. Remember, this is a continuum limit. Okay? Then, what we get is that, remember this is just a, this is just a Ka, right? Sine part, we just become Ka. So we get M1, M2, omega four minus two C, M1 plus M2, omega square uh, plus C square, k square, a square equals to zero. So we eliminated sine square ka using the relation we had before, okay? So this is omega square to c. I need a chair. To see, basically, it's a, this, you know, this is just a quadratic uh, equation. So, to see, m1 plus m2 plus minus square root to see m1 plus m2 square minus 4 m1 m2 c square, k square, omega, uh, a square. Okay. Over 2 m1, m2. And since k square, a square uh, is small, expand this square root term. We expand the square root term because this is small. This is small. This is small. Okay? So this is small. So, so we do the Taylor expansion. And we get 2C M1 plus M2 plus minus 2C M1 plus M2 1 minus Isn't it nice that something you learn in high school is comes? 
something useful. I don't know whether this is useful. I mean, at least you see you've seen you, you see this for for the first time in three years or four years. I don't know, <laughs> right? You we are actually solving the quadratic equation using this formula you learn in your high school. Okay. M1 plus M2 square square root. Okay, ah, then over. Over 2 M1 M2. Then What you get what you get is we have two solutions plus and minus for omega. Okay? Omega plus square is four C M one plus M two. Two M one M two equals to two C M one plus M two one. After all this work, oh, we get something simple at the end. Okay, omega minus square is just simply equals to 1 over 2 C M1 plus M2 K square A square. So now we have two solutions for one limit. Okay? So if I draw dispersion curve K and omega for Ka much smaller than 1, meaning that only around here, right? For small k, small k, we have a part, omega 1, which is proportional to k. Omega squared is proportional to k squared. So it is proportional to k here just like we had before, but at the same time we had something, this one, which is up there with the, with the value 2C M1 So we have two things. Okay? Now, we, so we, uh, we are also going to talk about the other limit, Ka equals to plus minus pi, the shortest wavelength limit, shortest wavelength limit, shortest wavelength limit. And we get, you know, M1, M2, Omega fourth minus two C M one plus M two Omega square plus four C square. I erased basically I'm substituting Ka equals to plus minus pi to the equation we have x one and x two. Okay? And let's just solve Again, solve for omega square. Then what we get is uh, omega square is 2CM1 plus M2 plus minus uh, 4C square M1 plus M2 
minus 16 c square m1 m2 over 2 m1 m2 okay then this And this can be summarized as, if you work this out, 2C M1 plus M2 plus minus 2C M1 minus M2, 2 M1 M2, okay? So, in this case, omega plus Omega plus square is 2C over M2. And omega minus square is 2C over M1. And this condition is true, this condition is true for minus pi over a and plus pi over a, right? So we have two solutions. One is this, the other is this. One is 2C M2 1 half the other is 2C M1 1 half of course I forgot to say that uh, you know M1 is heavier than M2 I forgot to say that M1 is heavier than M2 okay then I just have to connect them, connect the two parts. This is a straight part, and then it goes like this. And you have the same here, this way. And this is a straight part, but it goes down, like this. Okay? So now, when we have two, when we have two atoms, we have two branches. Remember, when we have only one atom, when we have only one atom, we have only one branch. Just this. Do you see any significance of this? This is a, this is a this is a brevi lattice with with basis. So this means right now we have. this as a and then we have two atoms first of all let's just let's just uh, let's just go to the uh, one limit what if m1 and m2 are the same if when mass is the same they they close right they close 
So they, uh, if the mass is the same, then this dispersion become, if the mass is the same, this dispersion become like this. Yeah? And what does it mean? Now, what is the same mass? Maybe it's the same atom. It could be the same atom. This is pi over A. This is minus pi over A. So what is the relation between this one and this one? Relation between this one and this one. It's just different A, right? Here, I'm saying, originally, I didn't, I didn't explicitly, I didn't explicitly say, what is A here? Usually, when you have only one atom, when you have one atom with, with bond, this is A, right? Right? What is A here? That A is here, the periodicity. Because it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's an atom with basis. So here, the A is here. It's, it's like 2A compared to this, that one. But here is A. Is this one. So what this means is that you can actually expand this. You can actually expand this. You can actually fold, unfold this to get this kind of relations with what you would say uh, pi over uh, 2 pi over A plus 2 pi over A but in fact this is same as this one right this one the white one and the yellow one is the same so remember we had this reduced zone reduced zone representation in a uh, energy uh, uh, energy band. It's the same thing. We just, you know, we are just folding phonons into smaller region. It's just a, it's just, you know, trick with definition of A. Okay. So you can also solve this problem as if this is a this problem, as if this is a this is a this is a this is a chain with two atoms in the basis with the distance a. Right? Two atoms in basis with the distance a, then you get this answer, red answer. But then if you expand this, you get exactly the same as this one. So do you understand this one? Okay. So we get this branch only because we have two different masses. I will have to give you homework today where later I will give you homework, but basically we have same masses but different spring constants. Same mass, spring constant C1, C2, C1, C2. 
And what kind of dispersion will, it, will we get? Is a, is, a, is a question. Okay? That, that I would like to, you to work on. So, back to this dispersion curve. So let's think about, let's think about the difference, let's think about the difference between this branch and this branch. When there's mass difference, clearly there's a band gap, energy gap, phonon energy gap, and there are two branches. So let's think about what those phonons are. Okay. So, in order to think about what those branches are, let's think about long wavelength limit again. Long wavelength, long wavelength limit. Oh, long lambda limit which is given by Ka, Ka, okay? Then we put omega plus K equals zero. So that means we put K equals zero into omega plus and we had you know, equation one, right? We had x1, equation one, into equation one. Then we get minus m1, 2c, one over m1, plus m2, one equals u equals to two C V minus two C U. That's what you get. Okay? And then you get if you sort if you if you basically sort this out, you get M one over M two U equals V. And this means u over v equals to minus m2 m1. So that, so that m1 u, u plus m2 v equals zero. What does it mean? The momentum is, momentum of this cancels out, momentum of atom one cancels out the momentum of atom two. This is just momentum, MV, okay? This means, because they cancel out, what it means is that adjacent atom, right, atom right next to each other. These move in opposite direction. Because when this moves this way, this moves opposite direction, you cancel out. When this moves this way, this moves this way. Okay? So, movement of atom, ah, it's difficult to draw. Because if this goes this way, this goes this way, this goes this way, this goes this way. It's not difficult to draw them. Okay? So that's a, that's a kind of a, that's a kind of a movement. So small one goes this way, while big one goes this way. And then vice versa. Okay? When can you excite this kind of a mode? Let's say this is NaCl. 
NaCl. Which is heavier, Na? Yeah? Sodium or chloride? Chlorine is heavier. Okay? If you say so, then this is chlorine. This is chlorine. This is Na. Then, if that's the case, then this is minus, right? And this is plus. This is minus. This is plus. This is minus. And if you shine light, plus minus oscillating wave, right? Light is plus minus flipping thing. Then when light polarization is positive on this side, if it's positive on this side, chlorine will move that way while sodium will go move this way, right? And so on. So this kind of a this kind of a optical irradiation, light irradiation which changes plus and minus in time can excite such vibration. So this is called optical mode, optical funnel, because we can excite this optically by plus minus oscillating electric field. Okay. So that is optical mode. So this is optical mode. This, so this branch is called optical. I'm using longitudinal mode right now as, as, a, as, a, as, a, as an example. For the case of transverse mode, what you get is the following. For the case of transverse mode, what you get is this. Um, CL, CL, sodium, sodium, and so on. You know, it's the opposite direction, right? The displacement is different direction. This is for transverse mode. This is for transverse mode. Now, we need to identify what this is, right? So, number two, now we put omega minus this branch and then at k equals zero. And then that's 2Cv minus 2Cu equals zero. And that means U equals V. So it's as simple as that. So U and V move in the same direction. So, if this is moving this way, this is moving the same way too. So it's just, you know, it's the same direction but different, different amplitude so that you get standing wave. Okay? Uh, in the case of transverse mode, this is, this is something like this. You know, CL, NA, CL, and so on. They're, they're in the same string, same direction. Okay? And no oscillating dipole 
Remember that optical mode you can do, you can, you can excite by oscillating dipole. Op acoustic mode you cannot excite with the uh, oscillating dipole. But you get um, by you know, like, a, like a thermal, thermal energy and so on, right? Just shaking, just shaking, okay? Yeah? And then um, let me make a few remarks to conclude the following part. First of all, then questions, can you only, can you get opti optical modes or this kind of a dispersion, dispersion only for ionic crystal? What? Ionic crystal, NaCl. What if, what if diamond? What, what, diamond, what do you think? Diamond is just carbon. It's di diamond, silicon, germanium. It's a diamond structure, but only one single, one kind of element. Do you think that will lead to this, or just simple one branch? It's the same mass. Same mass. Hmm? But it may, it goes to this one. Both. It, it takes this one. So I'll let you think about it, why? But just work on the different, different, you, you get this homework that work on different spring constants. Okay? Okay? Because if you work on phonons in silicon or germanium, don't you sometimes observe optical phonons? Yeah, you do. So, <laughs> so there's, a reason, there's a reason for optical phonon to appear, even for diamond structures, okay? So phonons, Basically, um, photon is like a pho phonon is like a digression on photons. It's very similar to photons in that way. Okay, um, you know when you have when you have two mirrors, two mirrors, just like laser. When laser emit, when uh, what do you call the when when laser lases, what we call right right that means somehow the 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 wave wave or light that is within the cavity we have mirror here mirror here mirror here and somehow the light forms standing wave and it goes back and forth right so this is a this is a this is a condition for lasing. And phonons phonon is quite similar. Okay? Uh, for for this kind of for for this kind of cavity, when we have L, when we have L, mode one, let's just say mode one is Lambda equals 2L. Okay? Mode 2 is L. Let's just, I, I'm just calling it mode 1 remote. And I basically allowed, allowed modes lambda equals to 2L over M where M is one, two, three, and so on. 
then this m can be as big as you want. It can be go, you know, it's not really infinity, but it can go all the way. Okay? And no cutoff. Then, of course, Km is given by 2 pi over lambda m equals to m pi over L and frequency omega m equals to omega m equals to c k m c is just a uh, yeah so in a way each allowed mode is a mode of the cavity. I mean, you know, what mode we have. Well, I'm, I'm just, still just simply talking about um, mode. And then the p important point is that by this kind of, with this kind of uh, discussion, we can say that uh, each mode Each mode is one minus d, one dimensional, one dimensional, sorry, one dimensional, one d, one d, simple, harmonic, oscillator. And if this is the case, then energy, m, is given by n plus 1 over 1 half h bar omega m. And 1 half, sorry, this is m. Uh, should I say, no, this is just n. It's just n. And here, one half is so-called zero point energy. Okay? So this is, I'm still talking about light. I have, I have said nothing about uh, phot uh, phonons. Sorry, so, so I should say, I should have written, this is just, I want to talk about phonons, but you know, I'm talking about photons. These are just photons. Now I talk about phonons. Phonons. We have one, two, three, four, zero, one, two, three. So we have N plus um, N atoms in a chain each separated by A. Then remember, we had this kind of a periodic boundary conditions. Or you can say this is similar or periodic boundary condition, or you can say, okay, phonon is something which is confined within an A. Right? Just like this, just analogous to this picture, 
phonon can be treated also as you know, two mirrors and a, this is the same thing as a periodic boundary conditions, but phonon is also entities that has, that is, that has some, you know, resonator. They can be treated as resonator. And we have to, then we can induce different, different uh, mode, and each mode each mode can be can be occupied by phonons of energy em equals n plus one half h bar omega m. Okay? So the main point here is, is that phonon is induced by very often by light or thermal thermal noise, not thermal noise, thermal energy. So the question is If I take a metal, right? Right now, this is vibrating because we are in a 293 Kelvin or 200, I don't know, 310 Kelvin, something like that. It's warmer here than this side, always. <laughs> right. And then, what if I cool, I cool this down to zero Kelvin? What if zero Kelvin can be achieved? Are there any lattice vibration? Are any, any atoms moving at zero Kelvin? Yes or no? No? Yes, because there's one half. There's always zero point vibrational energy, which is given by one half h bar omega, n equals zero, but there's always this one half h bar omega. So even at zero Kelvin, which is not, of course, attainable by, by prohibited by, by, by the term, uh, third law of the thermodynamics, something like that. So even with zero Kelvin, there's, there's zero point energy of phonons. Okay? And then at high temperature, there's always more phonons. Phonon is tricky. Phonon is tricky because phonon is tricky because let's say you have one particular phonon. Let's say you have there's one phonon in this mode. This mode meaning having this energy and this uh, momentum, right? This momentum, this energy. This can actually, this phonon can actually go relax this. This phonon can generate, for example, two other phonons. Because this can actually go to, for example, let's see if I can do this right. Let's just say it goes here. Phone on here. Hmm. Approximate, let's just say go, let's just one, two, and three. One. I have one, two, and three points. 
If I add energy of one, two, and three, maybe it reaches here. Okay, approximately. And if I add K, this, this, uh, this side, this side, this way, it, it might be here. So this phonon can generate, down convert, to generate these three acoustic phonons. Because it conserves energy as well as momentum. So phonons are tricky. Electrons you don't do that. <laughs> phonons are quite tricky. It can actually, you know, goes down to one phonon can go to three phonons by conserving energies and so on, momentum. So it is quite tricky in that sense. Three, three different modes. One mode can actually create three modes if they conserve total energy. Add this energy, this energy is this. And K, this plus this plus this is here. Then it conserves both phonons, uh, energies, and uh, momentum. So this is why thermal conductivity of insulator can be quite tricky because not only you have all these moving lattice vibrations, sometimes lattice vibration and lattice vibration collapse, collide to form two other phonons. Two phonons can collide to form two other phonons. As long as they, they conserve uh, energy and, and momentum. Yeah? Does one have a left hand, left Yeah? Optical phone? Optical phone? Lifetime. Uh, is there any lifetime? Yeah, so there, there's lifetime, of course. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, there, there could be a lifetime. Yeah? So things are quite complicated. In a, in a, you know, in a, in a, there are, there's, there are several different kind of ballistic phonons. When we say ballistic phonons, um, ballistic phonons, there are two kinds. One is, if I, okay, I hit here, and I feel the lattice vibration on the other side, right? So something is vibrating. It's a the whole mechanical vibration. It's not really, there are phonons, but it's really deformation at the, at the macroscopic level. But phonon can propagate without scattering, usually at low temperature. Phonon and phonon do, do, do not collide, okay? So that's a fast heat, carrier, so the thermal conductivity becomes high as you go down low temperature, okay? There's also solitone. Solitone is different from phonons. Do you know the solitone? Solitone is a, is a confined wave packet, moving wave packet. So if I have cavity, phonon is this one of those propagating, propagating waves. Soliton is, the difference is that, you know, phonon is just a pro big propagating wave. Soliton is a localized, it's like a bullet. It comes one by one. And soliton is hard to generate because the soliton can also down convert into different phonons. But if you can generate soliton so 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 efficiently, and without, if the solitons don't get scattered, then you can actually do signal processing with heat heat pulse, right? You can do heat pulse. Heat comes. You can do zero and one calculation using uh, heat pulse. If you can generate solitons and if you can collide solitons and let them calculate. 
Okay. That's something that people try to think about, but that's a little bit too complicated. <laughs>